As the early morning light filters through the trees, a great golf course comes to life. This is Kingston Heath, in Melbourne's sprawling southeastern sandbelt. This is the club that has long been rated number one in Australia. It's hosted five Australian Open titles in its 70 years here. It's been the backdrop for great drama. It was here in 1948 that Ozzie Pickworth became the first man to win a hat-trick of Open titles, beating Jim Ferrier in an 18-hole playoff by three strokes. Frank Phillips left the course in 1957, thinking his four-round tally of 287 would fall short. <laughs> it was too good for Pickworth and a young South African, Gary Player. Phillips returned to get the trophy. Thirteen years later, in 1970, Player returned to set a course record of 65 on the way to the sixth of his record seven Open titles. In 1983, it was Peter Fowler who left Ian Baker Finch in his wake. Six years later, in 1989, Peter Senior would beat Fowler by seven strokes when he won his Open. As the eyes of the golfing world focus on Kingston Heath, the modern champions return. Men like Greg Norman, reigning champ Robert Allenby, the 93 champion Brad Faxon, this year's US PGA winner, Steve Elkington, who won his Open at the Lakes in 1992. Wayne Ray, a dramatic winner in 1991. Peter Senior and Peter Fowler. And heading the overseas contingent, this year's British Open winner, John Daly. What a perfect setting for the most prestigious tournament in the land. Seven Sport welcomes you to Kingston Heath for this, the 80th Australian Open. Hello and welcome to Melbourne in Australia. The venue this year of the Heineken Australian Open, Kingston Heath, one of the best courses in the country. A uh, course which has been used on five previous occasions for the championship and as always I think at the Australian Open, the favourite Bruce Critchley, Greg Norman. Yes indeed, he's always a favourite when he comes down here but in recent years he's always found it rather difficult to win. He's put himself in a good position two or three times and not won and it's actually five years since he clocked up a victory. So he arrived very anxious to do well and obviously to, to win if he possibly could. A strong field as always for the Australian title. Uh, John Daly, the Open champion was here and so too Brad Faxon from America. Yes, yeah, always a nice to have a, an international flavour, and it goes back to the days of Arnold Palmer, Gary Player, and Jack Nicholas. But also, of course, it's important because the itinerant Australians come back: the Craig Parrys from America, Brett Ogles, other, and of course some from Europe as well. Jack Nicholas won this event six times, uh, Gary Player seven times, Greg Norman trying to win it for a fourth time here at Kingston Heath this year. Hi, uh, Michael Campbell, this was just a, a few moments ago. That's for three. Very cool. Very laid back. Back to the first, and another player certainly considered by many to be, have a great chance of making it uh, back to back Australian Open wins. Robert Allenby started to get his game going last week with a second in the Victorian Open. Next player, Robert Allenby. Robert Allenby. Robert Allenby. Robert Allenby. Most of these guys chip the ball, they're looking at the spot they want to land it at and uh, let the contour and the slope and the speed of the grain. So we're trying to just pitch this on the front of the grain and let it scamper on down to the cup. Newcastle Renton, uh, we have a we play a game and if you three putt, if you become the chairman and if you buy the drinks and the lunch and everything else, well <laughs> I would suggest that Greg Norman is in chairman territory. <laughs> it's a long, difficult putt. Up the hill and then down and over the ridge and then it, it'll gather speed again. Very good putt. It's a very good putt.
Well, Greg had a tough putt. Brad Faxon doesn't have as far, but he is in a very difficult spot. A real tester for Faxon. Yes, well, the ridge running across the green is a factor here. It looks flat there, but it runs sort of from about 2 o'clock to 7 o'clock, so this putt will be affected by that. Oh, that's a great putt. What a finish by Faxon. for his part of the last day. Three shots behind the leaders and a good fight back. At one stage, he was three over. A score of three under is showing the way at the moment. On day one, the Australian Open, Steve Elkington is not on that score. He is currently at one under. last night at the Golf Digest Awards. It's a great future. His mother was probably one of the best lady players we've ever had here in Lindy. Lindy, yep. 17, Craig Parry playing his second. He's in that block of players at two under par. You're right. This is going to turn out very good. You see his ball chased on down the green from the front. Probably a slightly straighter face club. <laughs> Quite a hold up as uh, Peter Senior waits. He's had an interesting year. His bank manager has now become his manager. So he'll keep an eye on things for him. Craig Parry has played a fine second shot in here. Two under. They're speaking with good putters. This fellow's no slouch with the flat stick either. Good move from left to right. <laughs> Popeye gets a birdie at 17. And this is Michael Campbell at the seven. Also for a birdie, the par five. Just a good two under. Two under, no, Michael Campbell. Even when you finish your round, the day's work is not done. Norman and Steve Elkington down there just working their way through the back, or Elkington working his way. And perhaps just asking Norman to have a look at things. Gallic Mercer there too, who's had such an influence in his game, just in there behind him with uh, the grey hat there. Gallic Mercer was with him last night at the Golf Digest function. Tony Navarro, Greg's caddy, in the white cap at the rear. At the sixth, Wayne Grady left his approach but short. share of the lead. That's an 11. And he felt that a uh, whole weight had been taken off his shoulders. He'd been battling all year to try and win. Had come close so many times, not least at the Open Championship. 
Now, Robert Allenby's got to that state in his round that really he's got to find a putt or two to go in. It's been a frustrating day. He's had one birdie now at the eighth. of this game well this is for a par and this is for a round of 68 to take the lead in the clubhouse by one well, two players who are already in Grant White and Paul Devonport a good round for the club well hold this makes the performance around of 68 for the New South Welshman Second shot to 18. Remember, he's a couple under. <laughs> Tough finish here at Kingston Heath. Probably an opportune time while we're on 18 to have a look at the IBM Green Reader and just see what lies ahead for all players, Jack. Yeah, well, there's a shot from the front of the green. Now he moved to the right. And what we're trying to demonstrate here is uh, the slope on the green because quite often on television it looks dead flat but uh, by showing you this we can show you all the undulations that are in the putting surface if we get back round to the front of the green you can see from left it's going to break to the right michael campbell who's to the right of the hole his putt will come a little bit from right to left for 69 69 second the best of the day so five players have a share of the lead at the end of the first round of the 1995 Heineken Australian Open Championship. Rob Whitlock, David Bransden, Lindsay Stephen, Peter McWinnie and Lucian Tinkler all shot four under par 68s. A number of players just a stroke behind on 69, including Paul Devonport, Grant Waite from New Zealand, Perry Moss, the American, Wayne Grady, the former PGA champ, and Michael Campbell, the very exciting young New Zealander. So a very tight leaders board at the end of day one. Let's now go to highlights of the second round. John Daly is just ripping this course apart, Jack Newton. Here he is on the par three fifth earlier today. Well, he started off by birdieing the fourth and uh, then proceeded to birdie six times in succession through the night. Now, this was his putt at five for two. Very much an impetus player, John Daly. When he gets hot like this, it almost looks like shelling peas. And with him at the top of the leaders board is Peter McWinnie. And he has got it to seven under. It was interesting what Norman said yesterday. He wasn't prepared in yesterday's first round for the Greens to be quite as firm and as quick as they were. He made the statement that he'll be ready today, so no better place to start than a nice birdie putt at the first. Sorry. This is the trap. Greens today, Greg. 
so far they're perfect. Yes. So here is our leader, Peter McWinney, going to the par 3 15th. Leads by two, he's at seven under. Bogies to finish with John Daly after being eight under par on 14 holes. Stop shots at 15, 16, 17, and now 18. Record around a 68. Still a very fine score, but he'd be most disappointed with that finish. Save par so far. Here's an interesting putt, Bruce. Uh, Peter Senior. <laughs> He's on the eighth. <laughs> Putting uh, from the 16th. It's a double green here, 16 and 8. Oh, what a magnificent putt this is. <laughs> Brilliant <laughs> putt from Peter Senior. Norman for birdie. This to go one under. to 18 and Wayne Grady. It's been a fine round by Grady. He opened up with double bogey six at the first hole and he hasn't <coughs> got another shot since and picked up three shots to be one under for the round, four under for the tournament and a fine tee shot here at the final hole. Here's Andre Stoltz. Just a few moments ago, he opened up yesterday with a round of 77. Here right. Pretty tough going out there, Pat. Do you down there? It is, Brendan. This breeze is uh, starting to spring up. It's coming in uh, fits and spurts. He's got an eight iron in his hand. I've got a sneaking suspicion it may drop back to seven. Casting around 30 knots, we've been told, and uh, you can certainly feel it down on this fairway. Now it's coming across his right shoulder. Yesterday, about this time, it seemed to die down completely, and then it died uh, down altogether at the end of the day. But uh, I'm doing that today. Let's start this right at the flag. This is the touch. I'm just pushing the touch left now. Pretty good. I'm sure that he's delighted that he changed his club. Is that uh, certainly a birthday chance for Norman? So just a par for Chris Gray, still at four under par, with uh, Grant Waite at four under. Anything well left 
to the pin and bring it back. Queenslander Peter McWinnie takes a two-stroke lead into the third round of the Heineken Australian Open. He is six under par at the halfway mark. Two strokes back, Rob Whitlock and Wayne Grady at four under. Then a stroke further back, John Daly, Terry Gale and Greg Norman. Plenty of experience at the top of the leaders board and a host of players knocking on the door also at two under par. As we go to highlights now of the third round. I think that's going to be the interesting thing today in Kingston Heath. It's very important that you put your golf ball uh, on the vicinity of the green where the flag is cut because these greens are very fast and you can really give yourself nightmares if you put the ball in the wrong place on the green just trying to get two putts. and Steve Elkington. Yeah, one of the classic par threes in the game, only 131 metres, but boy, you better get it on the putting surface. It's a marvellous shot from Elkington. Beautiful shot. It was interesting, I was talking to John Daly uh, on Tuesday, and he said he came down here thinking that he was going to be paired with Greg Norman the first two days, but uh, that wasn't to be. Let's have a look at Greg Norman's swing. Good posture, notice the knees are flexed. 
sweeps it away with the left arm. Good position at waist height. Now he cocks the wrist and keeps the shoulder turning under the chin. Weight braced on the right leg. Straight back to the ball and then rotates the upper half of his body over his left leg. Paul Devonport back at the first. This for three at the first. Looks pretty good. What a start. Green Stewart Appleby, who played with uh, Sit down. <coughs> Greg Norman yesterday, and Steve oh, oh, brilliant shot there. And the young man who got his card on the American tour. Back to the first tee, Rob Whitlock playing with Peter McWinnie. Rounds of 68 and a 72. <laughs> to play at the fifth and you can see there just how smooth the approach grasses are here in a lovely yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Gail not in any trouble off the 16th way to play this one eh, Bruce well, I don't uh, I think you've got to fly it all the way um, I don't know whether Pat Welsh has had an opportunity of looking at Norman shot and can give us all the uh, the facts and figures about it but I think he's got to no option but to fly it onto the green Pat have you had a look at this shot well very difficult as you said because the pin is tucked over this side of the green he's decided to bump and run he's got a straighter face club here uh, it's really only a shot of about 23 24 meters but as you said, Bruce, before, it was so very difficult. Big hollow in front of him and no green to run with. Now, yeah, pretty well played. Pretty well played. Once he 
got over 30 years of age. John Dilly. Not a good day for him so far. Wants to move to six hundred. Needs to be the three under for the first seven holes of the first third round. There's the T you can see there. One of the classic little par threes in the game, only 131 metres. But uh, as you can see, very well protected with bunkers all round it and quite a narrow entrance. No and, pictures, uh, please, one thanks. of the problems I think always for the players here is that yeah, you're hitting such a lofted club, a nine on or a wedge, that any breeze around can really play havoc with the ball. Pin today. I can tell you, 24 metres on and to the right, so a tough spot to get out. Okay, Wynn. Okay, Wynn. Yeah. Pretty good shot from Daly, but oh. uh, just needed uh, a couple of metres to get over that. I just like that his ball pitched into him and spun back. Meters to the front, and the pins on 19, 153. And a good shot, excellent shot from Robbie Whitlock. Greg Norman, fourth birdie of the day. If you can get this in. Winnie has this putt on the 13th to be an outright second spot. This to move to six under for the big Queenslander. That's good. As a left. Three 
sink to just three birdies. Condaly at 16. Remember, in the bushes in one. Could only get it out to here. Pat's down there. Puts the story back. Here's Bruce Wall. He's tried to smash that up at 75 feet. He's got about 60 feet of the trap for that. This is the third shot. So, Peter McWinney now has this putt for par. This to remain at six under. Geppi on 18. Currently at four under. Pretty good swing. Bruce, so this fella. Too close. The mound, uh, the spectator stand, the has taken Not relief. Okay, Not near the hole, of course. He's elected to use the putter. Yeah. Yeah. He didn't make a very good fist of his putt from off the green at 17. You can see he's got four or five metres of fringe grass to go through before he you know, gets onto the putting surface. Caddy have worked out the line. <laughs> 21 players were under par when this round began. 16 players are going to be under par at the end of the round. under par, Greg Norman could have been well clear had it not been for bogeys and the tough finishing holes, particularly 16 and 17. Jean-Louis Geppi is a stroke further back at five under par, then comes Victorian battler David Hill at four under, at three under par, Rob Whitlock and Craig Parry are also well positioned to pounce on the final day, and a host of players at two under, including Wayne Grady, the former PGA champion, and veteran Terry Gale, with the youngster Stuart Appleby, who'll be on the US Tour next year, also on that score of two under par, as we now go to highlights of the final round of the 95 Heineken Australian Open. This is Robert Allen on the part three fifth. The distance 173 metres, he's back to the par. Terry Price has got one of the best rounds though going today. He's five under for the day after 13. Great effort. Well, that's a beautiful shot from Robert Allen. Back on the tee, Stuart Appleby. Playing with Peter Fowler, a past winner of this championship on this course a dozen years ago. Big day for him. Four big days. Back with Norman the first couple of days. Good round of 70 yesterday.
Stephen Leaney could be a great double My for uh, the caddy. And Stephen successful. <laughs> Taking the first prize of $36,000. John Hunt is the caddy. Screw. Yeah, great shot. Too often, not a great first butt by him. Back to the tee. <laughs> Still to the honour, in spite of dropping a shot. <laughs>
the eighth in the bunker off the tee, but still getting his four and staying six under. Greg Parry at the seventh. Remember, through the green in two, got a, a hard bounce. Chip to here. So. Yeah. Certain ball will take him to seven under when he pops that in. David Hill for his par at five under and gave it a finish off this for four. And Jean Louis Geppi goes to seven under par and takes the clear lead in the Australian Open. 215 metres for Peter McWinnie. Left half of the seventh fairway. This looks to be right on the flag. It was the club. Oh, Four iron for Greg Norman at seven. The first of the par fives. coming up for Peter McWinnie. Wouldn't this give him a big boost? He would indeed get back the two shots that he dropped today. No. Still he moves to five under. Greg Parry at the 10th. Second of the short holes here at uh, Kingston Heath.
comes back to five under. Loses the lead. This for a share of the lead, this to join Peter McWinney at seven under. Look at this, he's got it. Stuart Appleby. Oh, he's going. Oh, be good. Getting plenty of cover bats. Quite a punch from Stuart Appleby. Jack, he's on the down slope, it's down into the gully, which uh, particularly as he needs to lift it a little bit. Just notice the open stands right down the grip to the steel, open the face. Just nudge it on the front of the green and let the slope do the rest. Right. Right. This is a beautiful shot from Frank Perry. It's the last of the short game, isn't it? Norman, birdie putt at 13. Just recapping, Stuart Appleby and Craig Perry at eight under. Greg Norman and Peter McMinnie at seven under. So Norman with this putt, which will break from his right to left. Just to regain a share of the lead. Parries at eight under. Greg Norman coming to the par five four is eight under. They are our three leaders. Three wood from the tee, Sandy. We can see by the shallow face club. Good club selection, I think. Well, this man's now two adrift of the blows players immediately behind him, so he's perhaps got to pop this in. This for a two. Just how much slope and undulation is, there is in this green. 52 on the background to the front of the green. Now, I must point out that uh, that is the flag position for the day. It's a wonderful. 
wonderful finish here at Kingston Heath. We still don't have a person who's going to be a standout winner. Greg Norman certainly is right there. He leads at the moment by one stroke. He's got this very long. Five-year drought appears to be over. Winning golf tournaments in Australia. You can afford to miss this one. But doesn't. For the fourth time, taking the title. 12 Greg Norman winning on 10 under par by two shots at the end of the day from uh, Peter McWinnie. He kept with him all day, McWinnie, but at the end it was Norman who won through. Geppy and Parry sharing third place just ahead of Stuart Appleby, who will be playing on the US Tour next year. Grant Waite at four under par looked good for a time before he slipped away. Mats Halbach had a good uh, championship. He too finished on four under par just ahead of David Hill and uh, Peter Lonard. Terry Gale and uh, Rob Willis on two under par and Robert Allenby, last year's winner of the title, on one under par. But this certainly was a week that Greg Norman will remember. He'd won the title in 1980, in 1985 and 1987, but I think it's fair to say, Bruce, that this was perhaps the most important Australian victory for him. Yes, I couldn't agree more because he'd, uh, it had been five years since he'd won and uh, he was very anxious to do well and it was a sort of monkey on his back. And he really won it tremendously well today. He was behind early on, other players went past him, and then he came home in 32, all fours and threes there, round of 68, he won it, the others didn't lose it. A great performance on a great championship course, the test Kingston Heath again came through as a wonderful examination of golfing talent. Yes, oh I think it's the best course in the world. I've always preferred it to all the others down here and of course it's a sort of southern hemisphere version of that sand belt we've got up in uh, up in England uh, just to the southwest of London. It's a wonderful golf course and I don't think uh, you could have anything better than what we had this week. So we've had a wonderful week here at Kingston Heath. I hope you've enjoyed our coverage of the 1995 Heineken Australian Open. Congratulations again to Greg Norman, the winner for the fourth time 
of the national title. From Bruce Critchley and from myself, from Melbourne in Australia, goodbye. This has been a Seven Sports production.